Welcome to the Google Cloud Security Showcase, a special web series where we'll focus on security use cases that customers can solve with Google Cloud. My name is Aspen Cheryl, and I am a cloud security architect at Google. Today, we're discussing VPC service controls, or VPCSC, our solution for preventing data exfiltration from managed services in Google Cloud. And specifically, we'll be discussing VPCSC's recently launched support of private IPs. The scenario we'll discuss today is the on-prem to Google Cloud perimeter use case. When using VPCSC, you can extend your perimeter to include an on-prem environment by using private Google access for on-premise hosts, or PGA, which, in a nutshell, routes private traffic to star.googleapis.com across your interconnect or VPN. You then add the project containing the VLAN attachment or VPN to your VPCSE configuration. I'll call that project the landing zone from here on out. VPCSE checks the source of network requests to its perimeterized resources and automatically permits flows that belong to VPCs within that perimeter. If we look at a sample hub and spoke architecture, the landing zone containing the VLAN attachment is included in the perimeter. And PGA for on-prem allows traffic to manage services to traverse the interconnect and land inside the perimeterized environment. On-prem is thus part of the perimeter, and you don't need to allow list those flows. This is what we call a macro or mega perimeter architecture. And it works well for a majority of customers. But there are two caveats to this design that impact some customers, especially those in highly regulated industries. Now, remember, a given project can only be in one VPCSE perimeter. The first caveat is that any workload traversing that connection is in the perimeter. Some customers want to isolate which workloads from on-prem can access those perimeterized resources at the network level. It can be done, but previously it required networking controls independent of VPCSE. Also, if you want to include on-prem in more than one perimeter, you have to get creative with your networking and perimeter architecture, including things like spinning up additional VLAN attachments or VPNs, a custom SDK and or bottle configs, vanity URLs with PSE endpoints, all of which involve routing and DNS tomfoolery. It can be done, but it can introduce significant network complexity. Security people might think it's a great idea, while the networking people might want to have a nice long talk with the security people. Luckily, with private IP, the landing zone no longer needs to be in a specific perimeter. Instead, the private IPs of specific workloads on-prem can be allow listed in. Here's an example where I've segmented up my environment into high and low trust perimeters. I can then allow list specific private ranges from on-prem via the landing zone VPC. Note, I've still got on-prem in a perimeter because I don't want workloads on-prem to be able to exfil data out via managed services. So let me demonstrate configuring one of these rules. First, I'll create an access level for that on-prem workload. I'll scroll down and select private IP. And now I need to identify the VPC we want to allow this private traffic from. I've got a few options here. I can browse for VPCs in my org or manually enter my VPC network address. Or if I have a lot of VPCs and or ciders, I can upload a properly formatted CSV. For our purposes, I'll browse for VPCs and select my transit VPC project, then my transit VPC. Now, if I were allow listing flows from another project in my org, I could use the built-in subnet picker. But since this flow is coming from on-prem, I'll manually enter my workload CIDR range. We can see my environment is now divided up into micro perimeters. So I go into my high trust perimeter. A perimeter scoped access level is too permissive for my purposes. So I'll come down to ingress rules. 
I'll say any identity, but you can specify specific identities as needed. And I'll say all projects since I've got just the one here, but you can scope that. And this operation is pushing sensitive data to cloud storage. So I'll limit that workload's access to the cloud storage API. You can get more granular as needed. To recap, private IP support will give more granular options for VPCSE architecture. I will call out that Google Cloud's best practice recommendation is still to use a macro or mega perimeter, as that is by far the easiest to manage and scale. But if you have a specific use case that dictates segmenting up your perimeters, private IP now gives you more flexibility and granular control to do so. To learn more about VBCSE, watch our other videos or visit our product pages here.